Okay. I'd like to welcome everybody to the Obahai webinar. This is Jason Jones. Hope everybody's having a great day. Thank you for being here. Um, truly appreciate it. Uh, I'm going to get started and turn it over to Sherman Skolton. He's going to be presenting today about all the technology and uh, the great benefits it's going to provide you as a Sky Switch reseller. And uh, at the end, then, Eric is going to talk a little bit, you know, just provide a little bit of a talk track about um, how Omaha and SkyShirts will okay. be working together right. in the future to uh, bring you even more valued services. Again, everybody's on mute. If you have specific questions, please put those into the meeting manager chat. And then when Sherman uh, gets finished, we'll go to all those questions and we'll be ready to go. Take it away, Sherman. Okay, well, hi, everybody. Uh, sorry for the delay going here. Uh, my name is Sherman Skolton. Uh, I am not, I think the mailer that went out said that I was the CEO and president. I'm actually a VP of uh, product sales and marketing at OBHI. Um, you can reach me at Sherman at OBHI.com. Uh, happy to send out a uh, copy of this presentation to anyone that's interested after the call. Just contact me. Um, first, a little bit about OBHI. Uh, technology OBHI was founded uh, in 2010, and really the team here has been working on have been working on voiceover endpoints since even before uh, uh, 2000. And all total, uh, we've delivered easily over 10 million voiceover IP endpoints to for residential and small business small business market. Um, and that's from companies like uh, Komodo back in the late 90s, early 2000s, then Sapura, um, and um, and a lot of that was based on the, the, the a lot of that volume was based on the acquisition uh, that Cisco made of both Komodo and Sapura, um, which you know helped a lot of uh, service providers with CPE in this in this industry, large you know large and small. Uh, in 2010, we have started. The founding leadership is um, uh, essentially committed to making, you know, once again, a better, a better mousetrap, so to speak, in terms of voiceover IP, voiceover IP endpoints, both for phone adapters, you know, fax applications, voice applications, uh, voice band data applications using a voiceover IP network, as well as, as IP phones. Uh, everything that we make is designed and developed and supported here at OBHI's headquarters in Campbell, uh, California. And uh, just a little visual of kind of where the teams come from. Back in the late 90s, there was Komodo, uh, then C Cisco acquired Komodo, and that was the basis for uh, you know, some of the very first ATAs and lower-end IP phones that you see um, still in service today. Uh, then Sapporo was in the you know mid 2000s. Sapporo was founded in 2003. Uh, was acquired in 2005 by Cisco, put into the Linksys division. Um, and then uh, the team at Linksys went into a new group at Cisco that was focused on small business. So there we continued to develop uh, IP phones and uh, phone adapters for SIP applications. Um, you know, purely using the open uh, standard SIP. Uh, and and working with partners to uh, ensure interoperability, and then in uh, 2010, OBI. Okay, so the whole idea is that uh, you know that the telephone is the is continues to be the lifeblood of small of small business, uh, and as well as medium and, and large business, and uh, this is really where um, our focus is. Uh, currently is in developing endpoints and endpoint solutions and management solutions for for um, applications where uh, the small business is the uh, is the end user um, and really you know this has changed quite a bit over the last uh, 10 20 years but now the technology that's being invested uh, is is driving all communications over the internet whether it's an app an IP phone uh, migrating the traditional PSTN to uh, IP leveraging the internet is is key to that, and uh, but obviously quality needs to be maintained in order to have viable business. Um, the internet essentially becomes becomes the switch, and the cloud uh, is the switch. So hence, uh, you know, great uh, service service providers like SkySwitch have come into um, being and are seeing a lot of success in this space. So here we see that you know Moore's law, which was a 
you know, processors doubling in, in, uh, in capacity, uh, every generation. It gets away to a cloud law and you've got people like, uh, uh, Amazon web services and other, other cloud, uh, computing cloud, uh, platforms, uh, really what's driving a lot of the, uh, the, um, performance that we're seeing in networks today. And the Metcalf's law, um, which is, uh, now very much in effect, especially with the Internet of Things, um, is is really driving value in, of these networks that are essentially leveraging the Internet as the switching platform. So Obihai is, is developing a, a platform uh, that we hope will simplify the life of our partners and hopefully their, their partners too or their customers too. Um, the endpoint is just, you know, the first, the first leg of the of the journey or the last leg of the journey, but there's a lot that we can do with all of the processing power and uh, networking capability that we've got today with the cloud. And we can really do some things to, to solve complicated problems or complex problems that, you know, maybe could have been solved before, but would have been a lot more expensive or a lot harder to do. Um, provisioning management is just, is just one example of that. Also, um, you know, we need to be flexible to the to the needs and, and current abilities for control and uh, and and based on the business model. So what what this means is, you know, we don't have, in essence, to be a reseller of a voice service. You don't necessarily have to know everything about all you know layers of the OSI model as it as it pertains to a, a voice call. You know, maybe you're focusing on a specific vertical industry or you're focusing on on marketing and sales of a of a of a you know, turnkey solution. Um, so really the, the, the products that you deliver have to be flexible to that. Um, and also the customers evolving, right? We're seeing lots of customers now wanting to use their mobile phone just as much as a, a fixed phone. And in some cases, they want to use the mobile phone only. So in terms of developing apps and management uh, that makes all the devices work, work as one is important. And at Obihai, uh, we really are focused on that, focused on driving to the needs of the market, um, looking at the businesses that our customers have and trying to understand that and deliver products to them that they're going to be happy with and that they're going to uh, be able to add value to what they're offering with what we're doing. Uh, and really, feedback is the key. Our, you know, our roadmap is driven by customers directly. And uh, so with that, um, we strive to provide good support and um, and take feature requests and, and, and suggestions very seriously. Uh, so OB high endpoints today are used over in over 180 countries. Um, primarily, uh, you know, North America is our, our primary market where we see a lot of deployments, but also we're seeing good growth in uh, Northern uh, Europe, Central Europe, um, as well as Australia, India, and China. Uh, a few uh, reference uh, service provider customers uh, listed here. Um, Skies, which one of them? Uh, but then we've also uh, doing business with uh, all different kinds of customers, from kind of greenfield over the top uh, uh, startup type companies, all the way to very very established uh, telecommunications companies that are uh, looking for a, a high quality uh, what's IP endpoint. Um, we also partner uh, with and make sure that our product is interoperable with multiple platforms. Uh, the um, uh, there's a lot of people that are out there that are doing different implementations of SIP, different ways to provision devices. Um, so it's, you know, it's of course driven by business uh, opportunity, but uh, we try to be flexible and work with with, with everyone uh, where, where it's warranted. OBI's products com are comprised of IP phones. All of our phones have color displays. Uh, we also have voice over IP uh, phone adapters. Um, we also have multiple, um, the phone adapters are, are one phone port, two phone port. We also have more um, sophisticated multi-port, uh, four and eight port uh, devices. We also bring in accessories um, via USB for things like adding an FXO port to a device that maybe only has uh, FXS ports, or we could add an FXO port even to a, an IP phone, for example, via the USB. Also, Wi-Fi enabling these devices. Um, there's a lot of applications now where the Wi-Fi network is excellent. And Ethernet might not, might not be pulled everywhere that you want, so our devices can also connect via the uh, Wi-Fi. Uh, Bluetooth is another technology that really suits, suited well for um, voice over IP endpoints or for pairing uh, mobile phones uh, to be able to leverage the, the hardware that's on the, the IP phone uh, with a mobile phone that's uh, tethered to it, much like here 
mobile phone gets tethered to your car when you're inside of it, um, as well as for headsets, as well as for even uh, uh, connecting a mobile phone to a FXS port if you want to do that. Um, the other part of it is uh, uh, zero-touch customization uh, and provisioning and device management. Uh, we're very much focused on providing a, a, a optimum platform for service providers to be able to uh, use our devices in almost any deployment uh, environment. And then we also are um, not so much of a, of a primary focus, but it is something that we look at our applications for smartphones and tablets. This goes uh, from everything from uh, operator consoles to management uh, tools. Um, we've done a little bit of real-time uh, um, client um, um, web RTC, that type of thing as well. So this is uh, what, we've, what we've focused on. Um, provisioning is very important when you're deploying these devices. Uh, there are a lot of different ways to provision the devices uh, and then a lot of different ways to, to manage them. Uh, we work with um, all different types of, of uh, provisioning platforms. Uh, so um, it's really a matter of how the device bootstraps itself to that provisioning platform. And uh, what you know, what the what the market model or the, the support model is for the the service provider or the the, the partner reseller that the service provider is uh, trying to support. Uh, management of the devices. Um, some of you might be familiar. We have a consumer portal where you can manually add your OB device to your uh, consumer portal account, uh, and then we have various templates uh, as well as some APIs for automatically. Uh, generating a configuration to the, the device itself. Um, I think that's much more, much more important uh, for this audience is the service provider portal uh, that we have, the um, what we talk device management platform. Uh, this is really suited for uh, service providers and their partners who have you know, multiple thousands of devices that are deployed um, over a, a, a you know, very uh, a wide area and uh, they want granular control of each device individually, as well as being able to group devices into organizations and assign user permissions to be able to manage uh, devices that are appropriate for that user group. So the device management platform really works in conjunction with existing uh, management provisioning systems and uh, obviously call, call control uh, platforms. Uh, so you really can just think of the OBTALK management cloud uh, as a another tether to the device that works with other interfaces that the devices uh, use to, you know, be a CPE for the for a service. Uh, so the OBTOF cloud can be used for provisioning if you want it to. It definitely is useful for zero-touch customization and bootstrapping on, on initial kind of day, day one or day zero type uh, applications for uh, getting devices connected to the service provider. Um, we actually can even make calls between devices. This really comes in handy for cases when uh, you want to troubleshoot uh, calls, uh, say, from uh, one OB device to another, but instead of call the phone or call the, call the attached phone or call the IP phone itself, you might want to loop the call uh, from the OB talk network out through your, your SIP connection. You can easily do that uh, in, you know, with the OB talk calling and uh, making a simple configuration change on how to route the calls. Um, we uh, provide uh, um, the uh, security around uh, both the OBTALK tether for management as well as for the, the, config, um, the configuration for the service provider. Uh, that can be done via uh, HTTPS with uh, client authentication, of course, server authentication, uh, as well as um, various encryption models for uh, delivering the, the profile securely to the device. Um, so just kind of once again, whether or not the device is connected to a local premise-based PBX or a hosted voice over IP um, service, uh, like what's, what SkySwitch provides, the OBTOC cloud is, is really for management uh, only and for, for troubleshooting. Um, so this is, this is a, a really useful innovation that we've seen a lot of service providers um, gain a lot of value from uh, that is um, you know, only going to get better over time. I'll talk a little bit about that. And really the, the goal of this is to be able to more easily support your customers and be able to bring them um, into service quicker, into service more reliably. Once there is a service uh, going on their device, to be able to identify if there are any potential uh, problematic trends with that service and to respond quickly quickly to those. So the, the overall value proposition for the OB Talk device management platform 
um, you know, we're really just getting started today. And really what we're, what we want to achieve is that from an endpoint standpoint, you really have a, a device that's out there that's smart, uh, that can report just as much, uh, uh, information as you want it to. And that we can even start to build in intelligence into that reporting and analytics into that reporting to make some decisions, um, potentially automatically to maintain the highest quality service for your customers, um, possible. Um, especially given the fact that a lot of these endpoints are configured over a non-managed, over-the-top, you know, uh, uh, you know, it's not necessarily a a, a um, broadband connection that, that you control. Maybe you do have a footprint where you are able to provide a, um, a very deterministic service from a um, from a, uh, a a layer two or or, or even or uh, and layer three standpoint. But in a lot of cases, you know, your customers go outside your footprint, but they still want your service. Um, and so it's really important to be able to manage this all the way to the endpoint. So in phase one of the OB Talk device management portal, that's kind of where we're at now, or in the platform. We're kind of, that's kind of where we're at now, where we've got the portal. Uh, we have, um, and we're working on a REST API that gives you access to a lot of the things that you have today with the portal in terms of um, providing access to users, setting up organizations, uh, managing devices, and also get, uh, gaining uh, analytical information from devices, um, as well as um, uh, being able to have a remote uh, syslogging uh, back into the, 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 the portal, um, and as well as things like PCAP and, 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 uh, and other uh, device-related information. Um, let's see. And then, uh, uh, we're then right after that, we'll work into, uh, the, the phase two is kind of where the, 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 the PCAP, the syslog, uh, alarm, being able to set alarm thresholds, uh, for, uh, uh, say registrations that are failing for, uh, MOS score that goes below a certain amount, uh, packet loss that goes above a certain amount. You'll be able to set alarms for that. And those alarms can be delivered via an API or an email or even an SMS. Uh, and then is really where we'll get it. After that, we'll get into the uh, analytics, uh, what's going wrong, and then potentially being able to provide some self healing uh, based on uh, that, uh, based on those those events. Okay, so the <clears throat> OB Talk device management platform. Let me see if I can walk you through this. If I change the resolution of my computer, I have a service provider here that I call SureVoice, and I'm going to sign into it. Okay, so basically, in the portal, you'll see. Okay, we go. Um, the resol- I had to change the resolution on this, so you were able to see more if you've got a little bit higher resolution monitor. Um, so hopefully, you're able to see most of this. But um, this is what the login page of the uh, device management platform portal looks like today. Uh, this is changing all the time. We're trying to make it uh, better. So any suggestions that you have, uh, please let us know. But you essentially have the ability to um, add devices, uh, manage devices. We've got this concept called base profiles, which is where you can configure a configuration profile on a device. This can be very useful in bootstrapping the device to your service. Um, you're able to identify devices based on unique data. You might search on a device based on its uh, SIP username or based on some other account ID um, that you can configure on the device and search on it here. Uh, we also have the ability to claim devices into the portal. So if you want to, um, if you have a new device and you want to bring it into a point of zero touch customization mode, you can do that. Uh, we've, we're always developing miscellaneous tools here. I think the only tool we have in here right now is you can set up a CSV file to reboot devices. So there might you might want to pull out like a report of devices that are not registered. Well, you might want to go ahead and just through this tether reboot all those devices and see if they'll they'll go ahead and, and register successfully. Maybe there's some kind of a firewall or router, uh, you know, NAT binding in, uh, issue there. Um, you also have the ability to set up organizations uh, and uh, and sub organizations and users that are specific to those organizations, uh, and then also this is where you'll you get information on our uh, firmware. What's the current firmware release notes for that firmware? Uh, what the previous firmware uh, that uh, is also supported on that device is, 
and a cumulative release note here as well. So to get to the, the managing devices, here you can see this is a, I just have one phone here that's online right now. Here it is. This is this uh, this phone right here? This is an IP phone that's registered. I can see that the, 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 the registration status of the phone. Um, I can also go into the the local configuration of the phone. This is the actual running uh, configuration of the phone as you would see it on the web page if you were sitting there locally connected to the web page, the web server of the phone. Um, we also have some config wizards uh, that uh, we're always updating uh, so to make it easier for people to load uh, common kind of template type parameters uh, that are, uh, you know, not uh, that are common amongst all the devices. Anything that's unique, they might go into this OBTalk configuration, or it would be provisioned via uh, the config the config URL. The OBTalk configuration is the cloud-based uh, configuration. Um, and so let's see. And then here I can so then here I can go into. I'll go ahead and go into the local configuration of this phone. Uh, I believe I still have a call up and running on this phone. So here's a here's a phone that's over in the lab here at OBHI. Uh, I will go to its call status, and then I can see here that um, the it's connected. Uh, what peer it's connected to, what it's using for RTP, uh, it fits uh, what codec it's currently using, packetization. Um, I can see uh, this call. This particular call has been up now over over an hour. Um, almost two hours, and in the two hours, let's see the jitter buffer, here's a 250 millisecond, we only have six packets that have been lost, um, 70 millisecond end in delay, uh, and a MOS score of uh, 4.3, which is pretty good for, that's fine for G711. Okay, so that's some of the things that you can do, uh, is look, look, look live at a unit, and then as we develop the API, you'll be able to pull out even more more information. Okay, so to talk about products a little bit, uh, really the uh, OBHive um, voice over IP uh, phone and fax adapters are uh, a great, um, uh, it's really great implementation of this, of this technology. Um, these are definitely kind of the latest generation uh, type products that are in the market today, especially in this class where you're looking at something that is, um, if it's a one port device, it's definitely sub, um, you know, $50, sub $40, $50, two port device, you're looking at sub, you know, $50, $60, uh, and then we get the four port devices that have, um, you know, more applications and more load on them. Uh, that are um, typically under a couple hundred bucks and uh, and or, or under two three hundred dollars in the the four and the eight port applications, and um, what we've seen is that the you know compared to other generations of products, uh, these devices by far have the best voice quality. They're the most resilient in terms of um, faxing, both real time um, you know G seven eleven type pass through uh, faxing and T thirty eight. People are using them successfully with alarm panels, uh, as well as um, other voice band data type applications like um, credit card point of sale terminals. And so we actually have some configuration settings that are useful uh, for those particular applications. Where um, you know one of the things that I mean the team here has been uh, has been really noted uh, you know time and time again is that just a vast amount of configuration settings. And tweaking that you can do with these products uh, that we expose—it's really actually driven the industry toward, you know, in this direction. And it's really it's based on a lot of the, the the method and the architecture that the team here employs, which is, you know, to have the a product that is the most, uh, you should say, universally interoperable. You have to really allow the owner a lot of flexibility in changing the configuration settings. And so that's why. You know, even going back to, to Supura, um, the endpoints that we made there, you know, they had hundreds of configuration uh, possibilities or hundreds of parameters that could be configured, you know, resulting in thousands and thousands of configuration uh, combination possibilities. And it really drove a lot of the, the competition to kind of step up their game and, and do the same as opposed to, 
um, you know, trying to kind of handcuff uh, service, services to uh, uh, one particular mode of, of operating. Okay, so the and kind of the lower density devices, we have the OB3 series, these are the OB300 and the OB302. The OB300 have one phone port, one Ethernet port, and one USB port. The OB302 has two phone ports, one USB port, and two Ethernet ports. It's they're the identical platform uh, from uh, uh, inside the, you know, under the covers. Um, in terms of memory, footprint, and uh, processor, uh, it just depends on, you know, kind of how many phone ports you need. And if you do need a, an extra Ethernet, it can be either a switch or a router. Uh, they can support four um, separate, distinct uh, SIP connections. There's that OBTalk voice service that I talked about. You can use Bluetooth to pair uh, phones to them. Uh, we have people essentially creating a, a, a kind of poor man's GSM gateway with the Bluetooth functionality on this because it can be a, a backup interface. Uh, you can put these voice services in trunk groups, so you know the device can be um, can go out and use the, the, the first available service to route the call. Um, and then we have the USB to FXO uh, if you need a, a, a kind of PFT and telco type connection uh, on the ATA. This comes in handy for things like indoor uh, phone systems that um, customers need to have access to to open up things like gates and, and doors. Uh, fax services, they can easily support two simultaneous T38 uh, or G711 uh, fax calls. Uh, the, like I said, the OB300 has one phone port. The OB302 has two phone ports, one Ethernet port on the OB300, two on the OB302, um, one USB on each. Um, but then there's the Bluetooth functionality, the Wi-Fi. If you ever need to have Wi-Fi on this, we've got a, a, a 802.11n adapter that you can use with this. We're actually also in development, uh, should be on a couple months, we'll, where we will have a uh, 802.11 AC adapter that runs both uh, 2.4 gigahertz as well as 5 uh, gigahertz. Uh, and then uh, I mentioned the FXO. Uh, you can use the uh, USB to FXO OB line accessory. We do have a product that's uh, on the roadmap, should be coming out in the next two to three months, called the OB312. That will have one FXO, one FXS, and uh, two Ethernet ports and a USB port. So kind of the same form factor, I believe, as the 302. Just instead of two phone ports, it'll have one phone port and one telco port. We have the OB5 series uh, adapters. Uh, we have the 504 and the 508 on the market today. We'll have the 544 um, here in a couple months. The 504 has four uh, phone ports. The 508 has eight phone ports. Uh, other than those distinctions, they're very similar platforms in that they have uh, four Ethernet ports, one gigabit, um, three 10100 Ethernet. Um, they also have a audio line out and line in on the front of the unit. I'm not sure if you can see my... Um, right here, you've got a line out and a line in right here. That's where you can connect uh, music on hold for line in. Or you can come out to a PA, you know, public address system from the line out, and um, and uh, so that's very useful and it's SIP addressable. So that can just be an extension that you use to connect to the um, public address system. So you don't need to buy a uh, separate, you know, SIP device that does Ethernet in, you know, on one side and an audio line out on the other. Uh, the devices also have three USB ports. Uh, USB ports can be used for the, the accessories that I mentioned before. Uh, these devices support up to nine SIP accounts, um, and uh, they can be um, configured all uh, independently uh, with uh, with uh, up to I believe six six services. Um, or actually, maybe there's nine services. Actually, nine services across nine nine SIP accounts, um, and uh, four phone ports on the OB five hundred four, eight on the five hundred eight. Um, and let's see, I already mentioned everything. Oh, the the one of the another application that's nice on the uh, 5 Series uh, USB ports is being able to use them with uh, LTE uh, USB adapters. Uh, so if you do need to provide a alternative means to connect the voice uh, to your service uh, in the case of a, uh, the Internet not being available through the Ethernet port, uh, the device does have um, failover uh, uh, technology in it or failover um, uh, feature in it. That uh, it will, after you know, not being able to connect via the 
Ethernet port um, to the, the the SIP service, it can fail over and try to connect through the, the data connection of a of an LTE device. Um, let's see. Okay, and then uh, I've got a, a comparison chart here um, that would be uh, useful if you want to get the presentation uh, after this to just you know be able to keep uh, keep tabs on everything that we're talking about today. Um, from a, a competitive standpoint, um, uh, you know we do have a lot of uh, history and legacy in this part of the market. Um, like I said, you know we've built um, and delivered to market uh, over 10 million devices that are you know kind of in this in this class of IP phones and, and ATAs. So the team here really knows knows what they're doing with this, and and uh, a lot of it has to do with um, deployment models. Um, how you um, are able to um, reliably provision them, and also, like I mentioned, making sure that the fax functionality, you know, even though, you know, we kind of all wish fax would go away to a certain extent, and uh, uh, it, it doesn't. And so these devices are really what, what kind of come in and, and, and save the day. And in the past, these devices uh, did, did, did not do that. They actually became another headache because uh, the, the platform itself just wasn't, up to the task of being, uh, you could say, sensitive enough or, or being uh, uh, rich enough from a processing standpoint to be able to stay, remain resilient while a fax call was going on. It's, it's, it's a lot different for a ear to listen to voice when there's an anomaly that, that's created by either the application running on the system or the Internet um, and that previous uh, error when there's some kind of a um, glitch in processing the voice packets that are carrying this voice band data uh, that really wreaks havoc with wreaks havoc havoc with things like faxes, things like alarm panels um, and credit card machines. So we think that this platform is is actually you know, quite superior to anything else that's that's on the market. Um, hardware roadmap: I mentioned that we've got the OB544 coming out before FXS, four FXO. Uh, we'll have the three USBs on it. And then we've got this OB312 that has one FXS, one FXO, and, and one USB. Um, and then um, we're also doing a lot more with SIP uh, trunking. We're seeing that there's lots of applications for SIP uh, trunking. We want to make that easier for our customers to configure and deploy these devices for SIP trunk applications. Um, also providing a uh, SRST, uh, if, if you don't, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's basically a sustainable Re, uh, remote telephony uh, for remote sites. So if you have remote sites that are that essentially are, are reliant on the cloud for their calling, it might be nice to have something that uh, can maintain a certain level of communication, either via the FXO ports um, or an alternative uh, connection uh, uh, that's local uh, so that they can, the people there can still make and receive calls and um, you know, potentially have the callers can still leave leave some voicemail if there's is an interruption uh, in the in the cloud. Uh, tier 69, tier 104 is another popular um, provisioning protocol that many service writers are are, are asking for. Uh, we've actually have that already in the products today. That'll be a little bit more um, mainstream in the mainstream releases, and then uh, doing things like uh, TCP dumps and former PCAPs and syslogs. Um, uh, to better help in troubleshooting and maintaining, uh, you know, continuity up there, and then also providing uh, richer uh, call data um, in the form of uh, capturing RTCPXR information and leveraging that uh, with the OBTalk device management platform, as well as uh, MOS, you know, call quality scoring, uh, et cetera. Uh, now, just to go through the, the IP phones, we've had IP phones out for about a little bit over a year now, really, and uh, it's going very well. Um, a lot of customers like them. We're actually developing a second-gen uh, IP phone that's more focused on, I would say, the hosted uh, market uh, needs. Uh, the phones that we have now are, are great for that, but then we're also le going to leverage the color display to even bring more information uh, to, the, to the phones. Um, we have three uh, that are out there right now, the OB1022, OB1032, and OB1062. Uh, like I mentioned before, they're all color display phones. Uh, the OB1022 has a, a three and a half inch color display screen, um, and it is uh, our entry model phone. Uh, it has five 
uh, line keys can support 10 actual extensions uh, and uh, um, uh, and it uses the same software as the OB1032 and OB1062. So you only manage, you only need to manage one one software release for all three phones. Uh, the um, OB1032 has got bigger color display, 16.9, uh, 16, uh, uh, 9 aspect ratio, 4.3 inch color display. Uh, it does support uh, EHS uh, headsets uh, with a kit, uh, and then also some some sidecars. Um, every key is programmable on these phones. Uh, every pixel is customizable. Uh, I like to say um, you can use text-based um, icons. You can use text-based uh, labels. You can use iconic labels. Uh, you can load uh, your own application uh, for directories um, and whatnot. Um, they're really very, very flexible. The OB1062 uh, adds support for gigabit Ethernet as well as built-in Wi-Fi and built-in Bluetooth. Uh, again, same same display size as the OB1032. Uh, the OB1062 has uh, six uh, line keys along the display. Uh, there is a paging or a next tab function, so uh, there's four of them on the 1032 and 1062. And there's a one, uh, 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 there, there's a two on the 1022. So that's why the 1022 that has its um, five line buttons can support 10 actual extensions. The 1032 with its three line buttons uh, can support and across four tabs can support 12 extensions. And the 1062 with its six line buttons can across four tabs can support 24 extensions. Uh, the acoustics of the phone uh, have been uh, you know, feedback from that and as it's read back from customers, uh, they're really happy with the acoustics. That's one of the tricky things whenever you make a phone. Uh, you know, you, it's one thing to come up with a, with a, a nice looking, uh, design. Uh, but the, it's another thing to, to make sure that the audio sounds good as it's, um, you know, reverberating and vibrating and reflecting, uh, inside that, that, that enclosure that you, that you've, uh, that you've designed. Uh, and we've been really fortunate to, you know, on this, on our first round of phones to have a very solid, uh, very good performing, uh, you know, acoustically sound, uh, product. Um, but with the color display, there's a lot that you can do with that in terms of either customization for your customers or delivering, uh, you know, other cool applications like picture, caller ID. Um, it's really good if you're doing any kind of a, a presence or buddy list notifications to have the color there. Um, and, you know, and we're really working hard to deliver these color, uh, devices to the market at very competitive, um, very competitive price points. Um, the Bluetooth functionality, because the phones all have USB and the, and the OB1062 have built in, uh, Bluetooth, um, it's very easy to synchronize a, a phone book, for example, that's via Bluetooth that's on your, your mobile phone with the personal directory of the cell phone. We're even working on things like presence. Um, or proximity um, sensors uh, with an application that supports the same so that you could, you could potentially support um, some proximity notifications based on feedback that the phone is giving you about the person walking by uh, the phone at that time. Uh, customization of the display is, re is really important these days, both in terms of the skin, the localization language, uh, what you want to show at any given time, um, what you don't want to show at any given time, so that's um, one thing that's um, uh, been uh, very well architected into the phone to give you a lot of flexibility in, in what you want the display to look like. Um, and, so then, and then here's a chart that shows a lot of the stuff that I was just talking about with the, the three phones uh, in comparison. Uh, we have an accessory, we have a sidecar accessory, a Bluetooth accessory, a Wi-Fi accessory, the OB line, uh, FXO, the USB accessory, the electronic hood switch, and we have a, a kit, and we have a, a wall mount. So that's uh, all I've got right now. Um, Jason, uh, if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer those. Yeah, we have a couple questions here. Um, do any of these enable you to provide the PRI on one end and go sit out to your switch? We do not have any uh, digital uh, telephony interface products uh, today, and we don't have any that are on the roadmap right now. Um, so, yeah, that's more the domain of other other vendors in the space. We're just we, we're pretty much uh, have our expertise wrapped around the the analog port. Okay. okay thank you. Yeah.
Um, and then the OB 1062 looks like a lot like a new Grand Stream that are manufactured by Grand Stream and have different firmware, or is it the same firmware but rebranded? Oh no, we would never use anything from uh, uh, from another company. Everything is everything that we have is uh, been developed from the ground up, from almost a microcode uh, level up here. Um, you know, from the, the design of the phone to the, the components that are used in the phone to how it's uh, the manufacturing instructions for the phone to every software, every feature. So yeah, we don't. Uh, Obi High does not. Uh, uh, OEM uh, products from anyone. Okay, thank you very much. Got a, another question from the East Coast here. Does it really support version dot nine two to alarm panels? Uh, what was the before alarm panels? The does it does it be any two? Um, so we had a lot of a lot of luck um, with that, uh, and so. So it, and it really, it's kind of alarm panel, to alarm panel um, us, um, specific. So um, all I can say is that, you know, we provide you with a, a sample unit and you can see if it's going to work appropriately with your, your alarm panel that you've got. Okay, perfect. Um, another question from uh, Rick White North. Historically, we have not been able to use these devices with security system panels. How does the OB i3 or the OB3 series handle this? Well, so the you know the the phone port um, you know behind that is a subscriber line interface circuit. Uh, we use one that is uh, very programmable, made by a company called Silicon Labs, and then we also have our own DSP uh, behind that as well, where you know developers here in Campbell are able to write code uh, that runs on that DSP. Uh, so that's kind of where the, the, the experience comes in. That's where our working closely with customers that are, you know, helping us, you know, capture, um, you know, Wireshark essentially off of the off of this to, to, to be able to understand exactly what's happening and uh, in testing to be able to, to to you know modify the firmware so that it so that it works. Um, and in the past, uh, the, either the platform wasn't up to it. So it didn't matter how much you could tweak your software. That's kind of underlying ability to, 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 to process and to, to accurately um, to accurately essentially emulate PSTN on your your little fifty dollar box. Um, that was impossible. But I think as as the cost of, of the processing of the SOCs have come down, as the quality of the uh, subscriber line interface circuits have gone up, and programmability and our knowledge around you know, programming our application to leverage all that that know-how has happened, then it's it's gotten better. Um, and I think you know a lot of it. You know, if you even when you look at a lot of the major uh, MSOs that are out there, you know, pushing their digital voice service, which is you know SIP-based voice service, uh, they're not having any problems with alarm panels and, and voice band data applications like like they used to. And a lot of that is the is really um, you know kind of heads down. Uh, work to, to, to make sure that the products are interoperable. Okay, thank you very much, Sherman. A um, couple more questions uh, before uh, we turn over to Eric here. Um, do the ATAs and phones support Opus, and which codes do they support? Okay, so codec support... Um, is a little different on the ATAs right now than IP phones. Since the IP phones do have the electronics to uh, reproduce and to um, capture uh, high fidelity audio, the IP phones are the only products that we have today that support Opus. Um, now, Opus also works really well in low bandwidth and, and lossy environments, so we have been thinking about implementing Opus on the ATAs just for, for that reason, even though it's not a it's not necessarily going to be a uh, HD call because you've got, let's say, you've got a cordless phone that's you know that's connected to a, a phone port, then there's no sense having HD on uh, HD codec on there. But the the a lot of the applications now might run into some lossy networks, especially say if you're using Wi-Fi, and that's where Opus is nice. So but right now, Opus is on the IP phones, 
And then um, otherwise, all the phones have, um, of course, G711, G726, uh, uh, ILBC, uh, and G721. Okay, perfect. Uh, another question from the East Coast. Does the FXO USB OB line pass through the CLID from the call into the NL FXO port? Uh, yes. Yeah, basically the the OB line USB um, to FXO accessory uh, is a true FXO port. Um, so uh, you can route calls uh, in and out of it, treat it just like it's an FXO port um, on a uh, on a on a PSTN gateway. Okay, and then the next question we have is. We have the devices out under the consumer portal right now. How can I switch it over to the commercial? So yeah, send me an email um, and uh, and kind of tell me kind of how you're how you're set up today with uh, say what the email account ID is for the devices that are on the consumer portal, and then we can talk about how best to, to get you moved over. Either either we can do it or we can help you do it. Um, but yeah, that's I've seen that that's uh, that, that, that that happens. People they they start using the consumer portal. Uh, we haven't been uh, we haven't done a good enough job letting our partners know about the, the service provider version. And so just to contact me, um, probably just send an email to Sherman S H E R M A N at obihi dot com. So that's obihi dot com. Okay, great. Well, I don't see any other questions up right now, so Sherman, thank you very much. It was very informative. Uh, thank you for your time today. I'm going to turn it over to Eric. Um, Eric's going to speak a little bit to uh, how SkySwitch will be partnering with OB uh, here in the immediate future and our, uh, our and what the partnership's going to look like. Eric, do you want to take that? I uh, sure am. So I, I've, I've been uh, familiar with the... Uh, OB High team since 1999. I remember getting my first Komodo back then, and it was it was just amazing compared to everything else that was available at the time. Uh, obviously, that's probably why Cisco bought them, um, and it, you know it, that that device became the Cisco 188, which was sort of like the go-to device for everybody in the early 2000s. But uh, uh, when when we started getting requests uh, at SkySwitch for better Support and and interoperability with uh, with analog ATAs. I couldn't think of anybody else else that you know would do a better would be better partners for us than than OBI. And so, uh, as as Sharon has done a great job in showing, they are really uh, ahead of the curve in terms of developing features and and support and, and APIs and and uh, really making their product an entire platform. So uh, our plan at, at, at SkySwitch is to take advantage of all of that, you know, uh, uh, from getting it integrated into our dashboard to talking to their provisioning system, um, making it a little more seamless between the, the current SkySwitch systems and the OBI systems. Uh, that's that's all in the works. Um, don't have uh, uh, any firm timelines yet, but it's it's definitely on our roadmap. Um, also, uh, I, I think there's a lot of a lot of uh, opportunity for using the OB High devices as disaster recovery uh, units. You know, in case the uh, in a hosted service, obviously, or it's only as good as your internet connection. And if the internet connection is gone, um, you know, you want to be able to continue providing at least some level of support to the the, the phones that are behind uh, the router. And uh, that's possible with, with OB High. Uh, so, uh, you know, this is this is largely uh, you know a matter of testing and and uh, uh, you know more testing, I guess you could say, on on our part. And well, uh, you know, we are planning to do that and, and to find a way to use them in that regard. Uh, and I'm speaking primarily because you can register SIP devices to the OB High, and there are. Uh, routing options and, and auto attendance and such, as well as analog interfaces to the PSTN. Um, so really, really the, the point of this call was just to introduce those of you who are not familiar with OBI to uh, the product. Uh, I, I think it, it's pretty impressive. And uh, just to let you know that, that uh, we at SkySwitch are, are looking forward to doing more with their platform and 
hopefully uh, exposing it to uh, you as resellers as well. Uh, that's that's all I had. Any any other questions before we wrap it up? Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. We'll see you next time.